Let's look at uh, starting with a confidence interval for a mean and then using that to test a hypothesis and there's going to be a twist in this. Um, so a teacher wants to make sure that his test will take 30 minutes to complete on average for normal students. He's collected the following data. Uh, he's got 19 students who've completed the test so far and he's measured how many t minutes it took for each of them to, to complete it. And we've got these various numbers. Um, and we're going to first get a confidence interval for the mean and using a t, t interval, a one sample t interval. And then we're going to use that. When, once we've got that, we don't really have to restart the process to do a, a hypothesis test. We can just sort of use that directly. And we've seen this a little before, but I want to do that. And then we'll also see there's a bit of a twist. So um, we enter the data. I put it in L2 because I have L1 from a previous thing. Okay. And um, I just do stat tests 8. That's the T interval test. And um, I'm just going to let the calculator do that. It'll be pretty quick. Whoop. Okay. I use L2 to, to get the right data. And I'm going to go ahead and use a 95% confidence level. That's something I choose, yeah, but it's pretty standard. Okay. So what are the results? Okay, um, it says the T interval results is the confidence interval, the 95% confidence interval is between 23.3 and 30.3 basically. Okay, so it's going to be 23.3 to 30.3. Okay, so that does include 30 minutes. So it seems like um, it'd be okay even though that's near the edge of the confidence interval. In other words, if I use this to test a hypothesis, if my H naught is that the time, the mean time of completion for everybody who would ever take this test is 30.0 minutes, okay, uh, oops, I don't really need, then we're not going to reject that, okay. Now, one must admit, this confidence interval is on the low side, and 30 is, right, is near the, the upper end. But this doesn't seem to give me positive reason to believe that this is really, that 30 isn't a plausible value for the average, okay? Maybe this was just a group of quick students, okay? So, big problem with this though, okay? What did I not do? I didn't check the assumptions and conditions, okay? So, we didn't check the assumptions. First thing we want to do, well, let's see, was it random, okay? There were, we were told that it's a random sample. Did I say it was a random sample? Um, we did, actually I didn't say that. Okay, so let's let's ask the person: Is it random? Was it a random sample? Are they independent? It's less than ten. We're probably be able to take this test in the future. Okay, so ten percent is okay. We'd have to make sure random and independent. Okay, so we just have to really make sure of the methodology. But there's another thing that's wrong, and that actually you can tell from the data somewhat. We didn't make a histogram. We didn't check the nearly normal condition. Okay, and if you look at the histogram, uh-oh, look at that guy. There's an outlier. Okay, to get an even better sense of the histogram of an outlier, what's the a good plot to make? A box and whiskers plot. Here's the box plot. Here's most of the data. Boom, that guy's way out. He's definitely an outlier. Okay, so and hopefully you remember how to set up your stat plot window to do a histogram and a box plot. Well, I'm not going to go over that. Okay, so what we can do is delete the outlier and compare results. We don't just delete the outlier and forget it ever existed. What we can do is we can say, okay, we got a certain answer including the outlier, but it's highly suspect because that outlier was there. Now let's redo it without the outlier and just present both to whoever, you know, to this uh, teacher and say, here's the two an analyses. And then he should go back and say, ooh, do I know who this student was? Do I know, can I s see if there's anything special with that student? After all, the idea was for normal students, for students who don't have some sort of special issue going on, maybe um, they're going to give this test to mostly who's teacher, students who've taken the course, but maybe they'll give it as a placement test for students who haven't taken the course, okay? Something like that. All kinds of reasons somebody could come in with a, a special situation, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do the analysis without, without. So a good way to delete the outlier is, I don't think you can read it too well, but you can see my circles here. I did L2, then store, then L3. That just says L2, arrow, L3 on the screen. And then that's just going to make another copy of the, the list in L3. Then what I went is I highlighted that and just pressed press delete. Look, 
I circled delete with my red pen. I love the red pen. Okay. Um, so I just deleted that from the list. Um, and then that just ends up making the list a little bit shorter without the 48.8. Okay. So that's, it wasn't too hard to find the outlier once I knew it was there, just going down the list. If you look back up at um, this guy, 48.8. If you actually, if we'd actually looked carefully at the list, even without making the histogram, we'd be like, "What? Almost 50? When it's supposed to be 30 minutes? And some of these guys are as low as 18? Eh, that's an outlier." Okay. So now, let's see, where were we? Okay. Yeah. Now, okay. New histogram. Sorry, it's flashing. So new, here's the new histogram. It doesn't have the outlier anymore. And I tried three different, three different box intervals. Remember, x scale on the TI is really just the the bin width for the histogram. Three and a third, which is what it did with a zoom nine. A little smaller 3, leaving a little smaller 2.5. At this point, the bins are being pretty small. There's not that many in each bin, so you wouldn't want to go smaller than that. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call this unimodal and symmetric. Okay? So even now, we've got to proceed with caution. The t-test is kind of dubious. If the sample size were like 50, it wouldn't matter. It's incredibly insensitive to this. The, the central limit theorem takes over big time. But with the sample size of 19, um, we don't have to make, have it look perfectly normal. But this is kind of dubious. Anyway, it's not ridiculously awful, so we're going to proceed, but with caution. We would not have complete confidence in the numbers we're going to get. Now, I just did the T interval again, but with L3 instead of L2. Didn't change anything else. And we're probably going to get a bit of a different result. Okay. Now, the confidence interval is 23.1 to 28.1. Okay. So now, the same percentage confidence interval, 95%, 23.1 to 28.1. That doesn't even come close to 30, okay? Now, if our H naught is mu equals 30, and our alternative is mu is less than 30, we can totally reject um, the 30. It's not anywhere near the confidence interval. What's the alpha level? Um, remember, when we're doing a 95% confidence interval, that means there's 2.5% in each tail. When I do a one-sided hypothesis test, I only care about the, the alpha that percentage in one tail. So this is actually a pretty nice, decently small alpha. So we've rejected the null, we've rejected 30 with an alpha level of 2.5%. Um, so yeah, in fact, when we discard that outlier, which was skewing the results, this test is too short. And of course, I guess as most of you are students, you probably won't think that any test could ever be too short. But as a teacher, I know it's possible. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate, do the t-test on the calculator. Okay, so when we go to um, the t test on the calculator, I believe that's stat tests 2. I'll leave this as data, okay, and it'll get the data from L3. The mu naught is 30. Let's test the hypothesis that it's 30. The alternative is less than. We go, do calculate, and we see, yeah, the, the t value is minus 3.7. Remember, those are like z scores. That's big. That's a big negative z score. And in fact, the p value is quite small, okay? So not even just rejecting it at 2.5%. Rejecting it 8 times 10 to the minus 4th, that's like less than 0.1%. We're really quite sure. Now, wait a minute. T-test wasn't super appropriate here. It was a bit dubious. But when the P-level is this small, okay, yeah, there's probably some, some uh, a lot of fudging we did, given that the histogram was not particularly good, not particularly close to normal. But still, that's, we're pretty sure. This, is, this test is too short once we kill the outlier.